yourself. Now, if you will try to learn, you shall both know how to read and write. Both Joe and his mother were ready to fall on their knees to thank Charles. They told him it was what they wished above all things. So, on the next day, when the hour came, Charles put his book in his pocket and went to teach Joe. Joe learned very fast, and Charles soon began to teach him how to write. Some time after, a gentleman called on Mr. Rose and asked him if he knew where Charles was. Mr. Rose says he was probably taking a walk. I'm afraid, said the gentleman, that he does not always amuse himself thus. I often see him going to the house of the fisherman. I think he goes out on the boat without your permission. Mr. Rose was much troubled. He had told Charles that he must never venture on that river, and he thought he could trust Charles. The moment the gentleman left, Mr. Rose went in search of his son. He went to the river and walked up and down in hope of seeing the boat. Not seeing it, he grew uneasy. He thought Charles must have gone a long way off. Unwilling to leave without learning something of him, he went to the hut. He put his head in at the window, which was open. There a pleasant sight met his eyes. Charles was at the table, ruling a copy of a book Joe was reading to him, while his mother was spinning in the corner. Charles was a little confused. He thought his father might not be pleased, but he had no need to be uneasy, for his father was delighted. The next day his father took him to town and gave him books for himself and Joe, with writing paper, pens, and ink. Charles was the happiest boy in the world when he came home. He ran to Joe, his hands filled with parcels, and his heart beating with joy. Well, folks, that's it for today's samples of the McGuffey's Readers. These, again, are stories taught several hundred years ago to help kids learn. You know, speaking of helping to learn, we've talked a lot about the Bible. We've talked about the words of Jesus Christ. In fact, uh, the words written in red ink are the words that Jesus Christ himself speaks. When it comes to saying things like, you must be born again, well, that was Jesus Christ doing the talking. And a lot of people think, you know, that was good back then, but Jesus is too far away now. I mean, he's way, way up in heaven, and I'm down here, and I don't know that much about the Bible. Well, it, it's true. He is way up there, but you know what? He he gave you a way to do it. He says you must be born again, and he wouldn't have told you to do it if it meant he was too far away. Basically, you do like the thief on the cross, and you've heard this before, some of you. You confess with your mouth, yes, Jesus Christ is Lord. I'm not a real good person, maybe. Maybe I'm even worse than that. But he died for my sins. Whatever I've done wrong, whatever wasn't right, he died for it. He's, Jesus is coming back again. But if I die before he comes back, I will go to heaven. And if I'm asked, what are you up here for? Why makes you think you can go to heaven? You can say, I believe in Jesus Christ. I trusted Jesus Christ. That's called getting born again. That's what it's called. Go ahead and do that. What are you waiting for? If you haven't done it before, no time like the present. Anyway, school's out. The bell's getting ready to ring. This is Prison News. Until next time, we'll see you in the next lesson. School's out. Goodbye.